So my peas are a couple inches tall and it's time to start trellising them. Last year I tried to trellis my peas, but my trellis ended up flopping over and I think it really hurt my yields. So today Danielle's coming over to show me a couple different methods for trellising, which will hopefully give me a better harvest. Hey Sarah. Wow, this warm weather's been really good to your peas, huh? Yeah, the tall telephone peas seem to be doing the best. They're a couple inches high. The British Wonder peas have uh, been a little slow to come up. They're just poking out now. And then after you left, I also planted some sugar snap peas because I really like to mix those with regular peas when I'm cooking. Well, they look really good, but they're a little still on the short side. I know you said a few inches, but I'm about to go out of town for a week, and I'm worried that if I wait to get back to stake them, that they could be a little too tall and be a tangled mess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to fight against that. So, all right, well, let's start with our first way of staking, and we're going to build a trellis. Okay. To build an ultra-strong trellising system, you're going to need a couple things. First, you're going to need some wooden stakes, at least six feet tall. Next, you're going to need some sort of trellis netting. This is available at most garden centers. You're going to need some brackets, some screws, and as far as tools are concerned, you're going to need a cordless drill and a staple gun. Here's how to install it. First, dig your stakes down as deep as you possibly can into the raised bed. Attach each of the wooden stakes to the opposing sides of the raised bed with the brackets. This will ensure that your trellis won't topple over. Next, with the help of a friend, staple down the side of one stake, attaching the netting. Go to the other side, pulling as taut as possible, and staple it. Once the netting is tight and stapled, cut off the excess. You can leave an extra bit of netting towards the bottom to help the peas climb. All right. Wow, this is so much more sturdy than my trellis last year. This is great. Woohoo! Yeah, I know. It better not fall down. Okay, so what you're going to want to do in a couple weeks, Sarah, or maybe a few days if the weather stays warm, is train these peas by just weaving them in and out to begin with. And then they should grow up just like that and really fill in the trellis. Great. Well, so that takes care of the telephone peas. Now, what about the other ones? Oh, the British Wonder Peas? We're actually going to construct some teepees for those. Okay, I've done that before. Last year for my vining vegetables. All right, let's get started. To make teepees, you take four of the bamboo stakes and push the ends into the ground as far as you can. Two legs should straddle each side of the pea row. Gather all four ends together and lash them together with twine. Sarah, here's a quick tip for you. You're going to want to, when these get a little bit taller, actually several inches taller because these are the stubborn wonder peas, attach them to the legs. Um, and the easiest way to tie them to the legs is using this. Pantyhose. Yeah. <laughs> because I knew they were good for something. <laughs> <laughs> so they expand and stretch. And then you just cut it into strips. So why are pantyhose better than any other type of plant tie? They'll expand as the plant grows and not cut off the circulation of the stem. Mm -hmm. So just a loose little tie. Okay, so I should be able to do that when these guys get a little bit taller. So what about the sugar snap peas? Well, we kind of have two options for these low growing peas. One is the block method, and it basically consists of running string around the outside and letting the mass all grow up together and try to support itself. That sounds like kind of what I did last year, and that didn't work, so what else do you have? Yeah, it's a little dicey. So the other method is called the pea brush method, and for that, we need to go visit your brush pile. I just spent all last week dragging this stuff out of my garden, and now you're having me bring it back in? What's up with that? Trust me, there's a plan. So all you need to do for this method is gently insert the branches among the pea sprouts, trying as best you can to avoid crushing any of them. So the point of the pea brush method is to basically create a brambly mess right down the middle of your pea patch. So Sarah, that looks really great. Now what we can do is that we can trim back some of these really crazy branches. And then all we have to do at that point is probably wait for them to flower and start picking pods. Can't wait. The other great thing about these trellises, they'll keep Juno out of the peas. Yay, so hopefully we'll have a good harvest. <laughs> hopefully. 